Well, to another edition of Aaron's Outdoors. Here we are in another one of my favorite spots in the Sand Hills of South Carolina. This is Carolina Sand Hills National Wildlife Refuge in MacB, South Carolina. Uh, for those of you that may not know where MacB is, it is adjacent to Bethune and the world famous Bethune Chicken Strut. Uh, so, <laughs> anyway, uh, this is uh, Carolina Sand Hills National Wildlife Refuge. Uh, anytime I've done a nature walk here, I've always introduced it as home to the ordinary and the extraordinary and this place really truly is uh, special it is extraordinary it is part of a uh, section of south carolina that is in the sand hills area a uh, fire maintained longleaf pine ecosystem as you see there's longleaf as far as the eye can see i am fairly deep into uh, the refuge there's a summer tanager doing his picky tuck call here right there northern mockingbird singing over here but let's, uh, I'll point at the summer tanager again. Hold on. Picky tuck tuck. There's a common nighthawk uh, uh, screaming in the background. Uh, beside me is a, a persimmon tree. Blaney, for you, this time, I'm not going to do a, a scientific name. Uh, persimmon tree. The fire maintenance of this ecosystem uh, keeps the understory low. As you can see, uh, we've got a lot of uh, broom sedge and some wire grass coming. Again, Blaney, this segment is dedicated to you. No scientific names this time. Uh, but this is uh, just an extraordinary place. People drive by here and all they see are pine trees and then they dismiss it, but there's so much more to this refuge. Uh, and we're gonna look at some of the extraordinary stuff. Before I go any further, I wanna thank uh, the refuge manager, Lynn Askins, for approving a special use permit for me to film here today. Uh, everything I do today is under that special use permit. Uh, this guy, one of my favorite Sandhill Coastal Plain plants. Uh, as Rudy would say, it's just so typical of this environment. Uh, this is lead plant. This is uh, Amorpha herbaceae. Uh, you can tell it a my man smells it. Uh, Cheryl, you're gonna have to forgive me. I wish I could scratch and sniff this again for you. This is, has a very light, sweet fragrance. Uh, uh, I like it a lot better than uh, honeysuckle, uh, but you can tell it a mile away by these flower stalks. Uh, look for this orange pollen. Uh, these really long compound leaves with these tiny, uh, tiny leaflets uh, on there. Uh, just really small leaflets. You'll get uh, dozens of leaflets on one compound leaf, uh, as well as dozens of flowers up and down the stalk. Uh, but what I love about this, um, it is a, it is just absolutely an incredible plant for native wildlife, um, for pollinators, uh, for a couple reasons. Number one, ooh, chimney swift calling above us. Uh, number one, uh, native uh, bees in South Carolina, the uh, mostly solitary ground nesting bees, uh, they love the pollen on this. And I remember early in my career, I'd see these <laughs> bees flying around with orange pollen just loaded on their pollen sacks. You hear that chimney swift there? Um, this is where uh, that orange pollen comes from. And you can see uh, the orange pollen right there on these flowers, on the flower stalk. Uh, so it is a, a very important uh, uh, plant for uh, bees and uh, pollen collectors, uh, but it is also the uh, larval food source for silver spotted skipper as well as uh, southern dogface. So um, I've been looking, I haven't seen eggs just yet, uh, but look at these flower stalks. You can tell this one a mile away when you see it. Lead plant, Amorpha herbaceae. is one of the sounds of my childhood. The northern Bob White quail. He says Bob White. That's where his common name, northern Bob White quail, comes from. But when I was a kid, this was a sound you heard a lot. And then between John Deere and fire ants and some other issues, suppression of fire, the northern Bob White quail population has dropped like a rock. I was part of a number of 
quail call count here in South Carolina for, I don't know, 15 years easily. And that was a sound that I was listening for. And believe it or not, there were a number of years I was on survey routes, I wouldn't hear anything. It's so good to have places like Carolina Sand Hills National Wildlife Refuge that protects the habitat, that keeps fire introduced into an ecosystem like this, and benefits not just a red cockaded woodpecker, but so many other species, plants, animals, like northern bobwhite quail. Pygmy rattlesnake is another one. There are so many other species that benefit from this management. And this, well, this is just special. Contact call. Hear that? That's the contact call. That is cool. Okay, guys, you know I like to get up close and personal on these things. So many people drive through this area, and they think this is just some generic pine forest. And there's so many stories to tell, and this plant has a story that I love to tell. This is Arialaria pectinata, a sticky false foxglove. Uh, and sure enough, when you touch it, it is sticky to the touch because it has hairs that produce a sticky substance. This is a hemiparasitic plant, and... It is most often found in combination um, being a parasite off of turkey oak. <laughs> and when you get in these dry, sandy soils like we are here in the sand hills of South Carolina, uh, turkey oak, Quercus lavis, uh, is such a common plant in these uh, open longleaf pine forests. But whenever you see these opposite, almost fern-like leaves, uh, with this very hairy stem, sticky substance, and earlier in the spring, I'm a little late for it here, but earlier in the spring, produces these beautiful uh, yellow, almost trumpet-like flowers. I've seen hummingbirds and bumblebees taking great advantage of the pollen and nectar in these things. It's in the broom rape family, uh, but yeah, this is a sticky false foxglove. So cool. Look at these longleaf pine needles. Wow. <sighs> smells like Mama's house. Yeah. Now there are three species of pitcher plants found here at Carolina Sandhills. This is the largest and most easily recognized. This is Saracenia flava, a yellow pitcher plant, a trumpet pitcher plant, some people may call it. Uh, but this is by far the tallest of the pitchers uh, and usually has the much taller flowers. A lot of people don't realize that pitcher plants are indeed flowering plants um, but they are and what i love about these is uh, as many of you know this is one of the species of carnivorous plants uh, they recycle uh, usually insects um, though occasionally uh, it's not out of the question to have a frog go down there um, but it's also not out of the question to have a frog uh, sit in the lip and wait for insects to come in um, they use a uh, a pheromone smell uh, that is emitted uh, to attract insects in. We've also found out recently that many species uh, exhibit a UV glow around the lip of the pitcher. 
And that's what I love about science is we're still learning the answer uh, to all of these questions that we still don't know. I mean, so many questions are still unanswered. Like in 1985, the research group DeBarge asked, who's holding Donna now? Whose heart she's knocking around? What magic can be found to turn me back to the one who's holding Donna now? And we still don't know. Who's holding Donna now? I don't know. Uh, but anyway, this is Saracenia flavor. Saracenia, the genus, comes from uh, an homage to the botanist Saracen.